The following interview was conducted with Roseanne Berenger, Corporate Secretary of the Board of Trustees for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, October 15, 2008, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings well, in early I'm, years. I'm right here from Lafayette. Um, my parents were from Lafayette. Their parents were from the Lafayette area. And um, I have uh, four brothers. I'm the second in line. I have an older brother and three younger ones. But they've all moved away, and I'm the only one that's still here. Um, Where did you go to grade school here? Uh, St. Anne's. Okay. Uh, we, I grew up on Wabash Avenue, and I don't know how familiar you are with the city, but um, when my grandparents lived there, when my grandfather was born there, it was considered like the Irish part of Lafayette. So by the time I came along, a lot of his, my grandfather's brothers and sisters still lived there, and my mother's brothers and sisters, when they grew up and got married, they lived there. So it was like you couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't walk down the street anywhere without somebody, you know, a relative, knowing who you were and kind of kept you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> At least some of us. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but, you know, it was nice growing up there because, you know, you felt safe and you knew everybody. And sure. So, you know, and that you could was walk fun. to school? Yes, we did. We walked to school okay. until uh, we got in high school. My brothers and I went to uh, Central Catholic. So we took the city bus and until we got our driver's license and then, you know, we drove. Sure. It was Central Catholic where it's, uh, for the reason it was located where it is now on 9th yes. Street? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. already there. Yeah. 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 I think that opened in 57 and I started in 63 or something like okay. that. What activities? Tell us about high school. Was there um, any um, clubs or <laughs> athletics that you attended? And mm, back then in the early 60s, girls didn't really have sports or anything that they could participate no, in. No intramurals at all? Did they, they have gym probably though. Oh yeah. yeah. Everybody has gym. gym. Yeah. But, um, but you know when the boys played football and basketball of course you know we would go to those and back then the girls had these block sections where you know they did all these routines and so you know everybody belonged to that. That was sure. just the thing to do. And of course they had some like um, Let's see, I was in business, so they had like future secretaries uh, organization, and we belonged to that. And um, You had activities connected with that, too, as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But um, then I graduated in 67 and went to work at National Homes Corporation as a secretary, well, the Acceptance Corporation. And I think I worked there for about a year and went to work for the State Highway Department. They were... Um, Go, that's before I-65 was in, and they had assessors that were going out assessing the land, and um, so I worked for them typing up their assessments, and then after they had all of that done, they moved back to Indianapolis, and they offered me a job, but I was engaged at that time, so I thought, well, I probably better stick around here. <laughs> back to National Homes for the Researchers. This company was founded in Lafayette, so yes, that by, it doesn't exist anymore, the but there are many... You drive around the city, and there are many sections that these are national oh, yes. homes people, and you can pick them out. And I've known other people that have lived here a long time can do that. Right, yeah. but you know, it was a big operation. Where, where yeah. was it? Where was the plant? Where would you work? The plant was on 52, but our offices were on Earl Avenue. Okay, okay. but um, I think the thing that surprised me after they moved back to Indianapolis, I went back to National Homes in their personnel department, and I think the thing that surprised me most about National Homes is people think of these little cracker box houses, but really Benton Woods is national homes, and those are very nice homes out there. And quite large. Yes, yes, and That's I was surprised when I found out that that was part of their product too. Yeah. And they stood the test of time. So. Well, even the others have too as well, surprisingly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so oh. I worked there till about 1980 when my third child was born, and I thought, Okay, I've got three kids. I'm going to stay home. Well, that lasted about a year. <laughs> By then, the neighbors knew I wasn't working, and so I was taking their kids and my kids. And How it, old were your children at that time? Oh, uh, let's see. Michael was born in June of 1980, and Mary would have been four, and so David would have been six. Okay. And then, of course, you had the neighbor kids who were about the same age. Right. And so about a year, I said, I've got to go back to work for my sanity. <laughs> <laughs> so I started out part-time, um, 
And Where at Purdue you came? No, I worked it. for. Um, oh, his name just skipped my mind. It was American United Life Insurance. Robert. Robert. Oh, I so can you see got the company. That's okay. Day. Yeah. yeah. You can insert and that in when you see the transcript. Okay. That's okay. And um, so I worked there for a couple of years, and my husband says, "You need new tires for your car." You better get some more money. So I thought, okay. So I still worked for him at the insurance company, and then I came over here at Purdue and worked Production Unlimited in the afternoons. And uh, then I decided, well, this is silly. I'm just going to go to Purdue and work full time. So that's when I started in the trustee's office in 84. So I've been there ever since. Wow. So that, that's where you, you didn't work any other department on camp? Well, I except did. Except for production, production I probably, Unlimited. Sure. Yeah. I did a couple of jobs through them before I decided that, you know, I would just go back full time. So. Very good. Yeah. So. so that brings us to, you came in what? In 84. 84. Yep. Tell us a little bit about some of the responsibilities and challenges and staffing in your meetings, et cetera. Um, well, when I first came, I was working just part time. Oh. in the afternoons. So it's just a part time, a half time. It, right. Um, but then um, my supervisor at that time, Doris Pearson, decided that um, we had enough work in the office that she could justify a full time, you know, person in there. So, so I went full time and I did basically a lot of the things that I'm doing now. Um, you know, I would reserve the room for the meetings. Um, at that time, we met in the anniversary drawing room, um, and I would make arrangements for refreshments, uh, make motel reservations, um, get the Purdue plane if one of the trustees needed to fly in at the last minute. Um, oh, gee, at that time we were doing um, convocation tickets for the trustees. Um, we, when I took over the position after Doris left and the trustees decided to just make it one position rather than to have, you know, me and somebody else, I told them, you know, that would be fine, but we have to get rid of some things that are very time consuming. And that was one of the items that we took away from this position. And you mean the it. scheduling of what? No. Um, we normally have a certain number of tickets allotted to the trustee's office and they're still allotted but instead of coming through me they now go through the ticket office and um, which really works a lot better because they would give us this whole allotment of tickets and we'd just hang on to them until maybe two or three days before the convocation and we may have you know a dozen tickets left and then we'd have to take them back at the last minute and then too late to resell it. Yeah, you know. and it's not like they were in the back of the stadium. I mean, the, the Hall oh. of Music, you know, they're up there in front yeah. where everyone can see. Sure. So, um, you know, this way they have more control. They're, they still give the tickets in the same general area, but when it looks like it's getting close to the time for the, the convo to come, you know, it's easier for them to sell those tickets rather than, you know. Sure, because people are calling, them. calling them rather than you. Right, yeah, that's true. Right. right. So that was one of the things we took away. Uh, another thing that we gave up was um, when we had, like, dinners for the trustees. Um, every year we have, like, a retirement dinner that the trustees come back to campus for. And we used to do it at the uh, country club, but then they remodeled Westwood so that they could have their events out there. So that, the president's office already had like an event secretary. And so we just kind of gave that up to them sure. so that, you know, that would be one less thing that I would have to worry right. about. And she does an excellent job. Because um, she's involved with it more than, than you would be. Right, right. So, um, so those were just a couple of things that, you know, we gave up when I started doing this job, you know, by myself. But, you know, I still make all the arrangements for the meetings, all the travel arrangements, all the uh, refreshments. And they have, um, when they come to campus, they don't just have their one board meeting. They have that uh, usually on a Friday morning, and it lasts probably about three hours. But on Thursday afternoons, they have all of their committee meetings and there's usually three or four depending on what type of information what type of things have to be approved 
And in addition to that, they also have like individual uh, executive sessions with just the trustees by themselves or just the trustees and the president or the trustees and the executive vice president and treasurer or provost. So, you know, you have to make arrangements, room arrangements for all of that. And um, occasionally there are things on campus that they like to see. I'm trying to think what the last thing might have been. Mm, like they had new? like a, a dinner in the library gallery. You know, so, you know, they do things like that. Um, we're trying to work out a schedule where maybe they can visit the Envision Center sometime. Uh, occasionally, if they can work it in, they like to have a meal at one of the dining courts. And of course, you have to, when they go someplace away from the union, you have to get a van or a bus or something to transport them you know, sure. to where they're going. Um, so, you know, all of that takes time, sure, and right. so you know. They used to, isn't there a tr in the union? Um, is there a trustees room on the second floor? Be on near the third the floor. Third, is that where it is in the in the union? It used they to used be. They have a cabinet in there, and at oh, one time there's a trustees suite. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of because we had when I was in archives, we had some materials that had been loaned, and they were it was in a bookcase or something that was in there. Yes, yeah. yes, that's their suite, they, and they usually have their executive stations in there because those are not open to the public right. okay. and there's usually just the ten of them or you know like I said the president or one of the vice presidents so um, in fact I've been working with them to try to get that uh, try to get a computer in there so they can start doing PowerPoints in there sure um, but um, yeah they do have that um, do you take what about minutes of the say committee meeting? You take the, the minutes that are the, for the public that are uh, online, right? At the uh, but we have uh, Mike Dickey in the uh, I tap down in the basement. Uh, he records all of those for us. We have all of our committee meetings and our stated meeting in three twenty six Stewart, and they have it set up where you know he can record all the minutes. And you know it used to be we had these big tapes and. And you'd get like three or four different tapes for all of the meetings. Now they're on this little video. <laughs> it's just amazing. Would you still take the minutes by hand or not? Uh, or sometimes I do, but okay. not as much as I used to. I yeah. bet that do you, do you like that. Is it easier for you? It is. And the only thing that I find different about the, the minutes now is um, the trustees a few years ago asked that they not be so detailed that it just kind of say yes this this item was acted on and it was approved and so now whereas the minutes used to be like 40 pages long now they're like six or seven <laughs> which is nice but i think of the people in the future who are going to have to come back and may want to review revisit that right and the only way they're going to be able to do that is to go back to the actual document to see what actually went to the trustees. Sure, right. So, otherwise, it used to all be in the minutes. So I like to do their homework. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, who was the uh, chairman when you? That uh, was in eighty four. Don Powers. Don Powers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then after Don was Bob Jesse, Jesse and then and Tim. Tim McGinley. Right, uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Uh, who set uh, agenda sets? Who sets the agenda for it? Uh, we have a committee. It's the president. Um, the treasurer, the provost, um, Murray Blackwater in advancement, uh, Rob Mukherjee, Greg Cap, and myself. And if anybody wants to put something on the agenda, they have to either go through the treasurer, the provost, or the president. So, you know, a lot of people will call me and say, I want to put this on the agenda, and I'll say, well, you know, what area of the university are you? And if they're academic, I tell them they have to go through the provost. If they're the business, I tell them they have to go through the treasurer. So, right. okay. um, but you know, we have a meeting, probably about two weeks before the board meeting, to set the the final agenda. We have a meeting about a month before the actual meeting to set the schedule, to see how much time um, they think they're going to need for their meetings because by law, we have to send out a notice to the press telling them what time the meetings are going to start. So the even- The sunshine law. Yeah, so even though you say the academic affair is gonna start at two o'clock and the finance is gonna start at three, if you get done with the academic affairs at 2.30, you still can't start the finance until three o'clock. Okay. So, 
Um, we haven't been doing very good at juggling things <laughs> recently. <laughs> That's not easy to do because you can get carried uh, away. Like you've yes. been in meetings for, you know, mm -hmm. you just don't, you anticipate, but you can't. Right, you know, right. Exactly. Uh, now, you, you talked about the, you, so you work, do you work with the committee members too, your liaison, uh, in any fashion at all, with committee members? Or, the committee members of the board? Or board, yeah. Uh, just in setting up their meetings. Um, Maybe the site where they're going to be meet. Or, right. Mm -hmm. and and, you know doing their minutes also um, right now the board is kind of in a transition trying to think about the committees that they currently have and see if they want to keep them that way or if they want to reorganize them but right. um, um, the committees, uh, how are they, are they elected to be uh, to serve on the committee? Uh, Tim appoints the committee. It's an appointment from, yeah. from the members, okay. Right. But for the researchers, the secretary, such as yourself, you're, it's an election, just like the chair is right. an election. Mm -hmm. And what is it, for two year, three years or two years? Uh, two years. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, commencement, are you involved in any of the arrangements for the commencement? Um, just letting the trustees know when the commencement is, trying to find out when they're, if, who's going to be able to attend. Um, making travel arrangements and hotel arrangements for those who are coming, um, getting refreshments delivered from the union over to Hubdi. Um, we robe the trustees, we help them put their cap and gown on and just make sure that they're in line when they're supposed to be. Right. Is there a lunch, sometimes there's, isn't there a luncheon maybe in between? You yeah, the off. president's office takes care of that. Right, yeah. um, and sometimes the distinguished people are, are in taking right. a couple years ago. Oh, about four or five years ago, a friend of mine, we were in, I was over in Stone Hall. Right. And it was really right. out nice. Yes. And then some trustee uh, hosted events. Uh, you mentioned one time about the retirement, those right. who are retiring. And um, in fact, in November, the Friday afternoon after their board meeting, they're hosting a reception for the trustee and presidential scholarship recipients. In the which is ballroom. which is new for the researchers. This yes. is something new, right? So yeah, they're looking forward to that. Yeah, that that's should be, be really. Fun. Yeah, yeah. That they like be... to meet with the students. Oh yeah, so that right. makes it nice. Um, now you, you served under what, just Dr. Jeske because when you came and Dr. Baring and Dr. Baring mm -hmm. and then Dr. Jeske and right. now President Cordova. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make a comment about the student trustee that um, that's on the board. It, it's a Jill voting. right now. We're right. yeah, any yeah, of them. in general and also the one that's on now and how um, they get on the well, board. They, a lot of people think that we have something to do with the election of the student, but we don't have anything to do with any of the trustees. Um, the three of the trustees are appointed by the governor, and the others, no, appointed by the alumni. They're elected by the alumni, and the rest are appointed by the governor. Okay. But um, the student trustee, they, they're for a two-year term, and Jill's term is ending uh, next June 30th. And so this spring semester, there will be like an advertisement in the exponent with an application for people to fill out, and that will go through the dean of students' office. And then they have a committee over there that looks at the Application. um, applications and the resumes that come in with them, and they do the interviewing, and they pick out probably three or four candidates to refer to the governor. And then the governor interviews students, and the governor makes the final decision. Oh, that's but, you know, it's like... Every year you think this is the best student we've had, and the next one comes in and you go, wow, this one. I always just hear the same thing. They've just made a wonderful, con a very worthwhile contribution. And, oh, but they yes. have the wow because they're getting interviewed too. And say, wow, I didn't think I'd get elected, but it's just great. I mean, yes. Jill said the same thing when she was interviewed on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's really pretty oh. good. Um, any traditions? Does the board have any specific traditions that you can think of? Mm. What they do? Not that I can think of. Um, pretty um, much, pretty pretty standard. They um, might make some internal changes, but other than that, they pretty much stay the same. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, what happens? Do you ever? Does a meeting ever get canceled? Um, you need. Uh, usually, if a meeting gets canceled, it's usually the December meeting. Oh, okay. Um, now you said that the uh, the dates are set what a year in advance. Is that pretty uh, right. Much? We're working oh. on 2010 right now. Oh, okay. So uh, I think that one's probably been canceled more than any of them, but even that's only been canceled a couple of times sure. since I've been here. Yeah. Well, they still normally they will come for the commencement, which is in December, too. Right, going to be here. It's usually that weekend. And let me ask you this. Oftentimes the meetings are sort of 
uh, scheduled around commencement, there might be a time. Is that uh, well? Or, or not, may I, not necessarily be the case. Well, when I first started, they were scheduled the same weekend as commencement, but. Dr. Bearing found that very tiring because he not only has these four commencements here, he's got the regionals and he's got all the statewide right. commencements. And he went to all of them. He went to all of them. So uh, we eventually moved the board meeting away from the commencement weekend. It may be the weekend before or the weekend after, but it's not the same weekend. All right. That gives yeah. a little bit of a break then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all about uh, the trustees minutes digitization I put that on there oh. and share that this is this is a, a breakthrough for the research this is a breakthrough oh, we started I'm, back in the first one tell them you oh, first. I am so excited about this project um, you've been thinking about it for some time oh, I have I've, I've tried I've tried with ITAP I tried with um, marketing communication and they all said oh yes we can do this we can do this but none of them came through <laughs> so I thought okay the library has to be doing something. And, oh, Carl has been so nice and so helpful. Yes, he's very and good. this is going to be so nice when it's finished. What, are, you, what are your plans? Are they just going to keep their, their store, the originals? On the, the, they'll leave them in the bottom. And they all had to be transcribed before they, for the researchers before they got digitized. Yeah. All in hand and the handwriting. Yeah, Even I think Carl there were said. like two or three volumes like that. Right. Uh, then I think they scanned the rest of them. Yeah. But uh, but the early ones, I uh, I did not. I felt sorry for whoever had to do that because <laughs> I know just trying to go back and research some of those. Each person, each secretary's handwriting was different, so you get used to one person, and then somebody else starts writing, and you have to learn it all over again. I know, but right. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Um, but the users are going to tell for the users they're going to be able to. Uh, They're going to be, be able to just hopefully just type in a word, say if they want to find something about Dr. Elliot, you know, they can just type in his name and everything pertaining to Elliot will So it'll be full up. text searchable, so you can yes. just put in any sort of keyword if you mm -hmm. want, something like that, whatever. Right. And one of the things they have in there I always found helpful was the, um, in, well, this would be for the Senate, but the memorial resolutions, which were in there for the people, and yes. you know, use the, they were really pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. How about any awards or honors that you'd like to share with the researchers? Anything special mm -hmm. come your way? Oh, well, the only thing I can think of is when I, after I'd been here at Purdue for a few years, I went back to school. I hadn't had any college education, and I got an associate degree with highest distinction. Very good. Yeah. From, what, from what school? Um, organizations. Supervision. Very good. Yes. And, so. and you continue to work full time and went to school? Oh, yeah, and raised my five kids. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere or other, when you look back on it, you wonder how you uh, did it, right? Oh, I know. Yeah, tell, us about I know. Your, tell us about your family, what they're doing. Um, what, are they Purdue grads? Um, three of them are. One, The fourth one will be next May, and Ruby's uh, doing her sophomore year this year. So uh, David's the oldest. He was born in 74. He graduated in 97, the same year I got my associate degree. He graduated from liberal arts and in marketing, and he's a finance manager at a car dealership in Ballard. And then Mary's the second. Uh, she was born in 76. She also graduated from liberal arts in communication, and she got her master's in communication, interpersonal communication. In fact, she's an academic advisor here. You met her. Mm -hmm. um, over in electrical and computer engineering, so she just loves that. Um, David, is, by the way, is married and has two children, Ethan and Evelyn, my only grandchildren. Mary's still looking. Um, our son Michael is, uh, he graduated from Cranert in uh, accounting, and he's an accountant with Time Warner in Raleigh, North Carolina. When he first graduated, he went to work for Huth Thompson here in town as an accountant. But he decided when he moved to North Carolina that he didn't want to do taxes anymore. So <laughs> he got a different kind of accounting job. So he likes that a lot better. He's the one who's getting married in North Carolina on the beach in May. Uh, Sarah's a senior this year here at Purdue. She's um, in education. So this is her last semester. She's going to be student teaching at Hershey next year. And then she's going to get married on July the 18th. And her, her fiancé is a senior here at Purdue. He's in aeronautical and astronautical engineering. Um, they went to high school together and started dating for the prom. 
in high school. He asked her to the prom, and they've been together ever since. So Very good. Uh, um, and then our youngest is Ruby, and she is a sophomore in um, CFS. She wants to work with teenagers. She uh, is, uh, what is that group that she works with right now? Um, oh, I forget what they're called. Um, Does she work on them after school or some it's like something, community thing? No, it's, oh. um, it's some kind of a faith group. Uh, she was in it, in fact, her and Sarah were both in it at Harrison, but Ruby's in charge of it out of Central Catholic, oh, okay. but I can't remember what yeah, the name okay. of it is. But um, but she helps at, like, the, the LUM camps. She did that this summer. And um, whatever this group is, they had a camp somewhere that's in North Carolina during the summer. Isn't that terrible? She went, just kind of I know. She went down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, they, do they live at home or do they live on campus? Uh, Sarah and Ruby live on campus. Mary lives at home with me. My husband passed away unexpectedly about three years ago. So Mary was in Arizona at the time, and she decided that she would come back here. So she's back here with me. Oh, that's so, nice. But I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> we won't leave Mom alone, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> How about some campus changes? The facilities have changed since oh. you came here. Wow. Gosh, and yeah. even since you were growing up because you're, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things I remember the most about growing up and just driving past campus on Northwestern was being able to look in and see the Loeb Fountain and all the colors at night. You could look in there and see it? Yeah, wow. but not now. Not since they put that building up there. That's right, because you used to be, I, you, you could, be because you could through. drive in and park there. Yes, yes. And, uh it was funny because when they were first building that area out there and putting up that building, after oh, they had all the buildings, doors used to say, it looks just like a prison yard out there. <laughs> 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 but it is so pretty now. I it, mean, it's it just is. gorgeous, especially in the spring when the trees are blooming. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. Right. But I think that's one of the major things in uh, just getting most of the traffic off campus. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. You can drive down the road and even when you're going slow these kids just walk out in front of you because you know they're thinking about their classes and their homework and they're not thinking about where they're going and I've even seen my daughters do it and it's like oh whoa so you know I think getting the cars and vehicles off campus is is right. really great really so, is you know and, yeah. and the carrying I think the, the fences that are the same all around which is amazing to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to others as well I'm sure how about Chauncey um, Village that's is that cha when you were growing up was that as mm -hmm. busy or what I don't think it was I don't remember it being as busy as it is now um and I don't know if it's just because more of the housing over in that area is now student yep. housing. Yeah, that could and be. And I think that's probably contributing it's been, to and it. Is it. And around campus, maybe in the early years, a lot of the houses, there aren't as many now, but there were, and those were, people lived in them. Right. Because some people have said that when they were here as grad students in the 50s or 40s or 60s, they had apartments or, well, a room in a house, you know, right. that was in there right. to walk to campus. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Okay. How about a uh, favorite tradition? You got one of those that you'd like to share with us? Mm, I think just Purdue's homecoming, especially when they bring the uh, oh, the dad. band. The, oh, yes. I never played in the band. I never played an instrument at all, but my uh, brother-in-law played, played in the band, and he comes back, you know, when they have the band, and... You know, it's just so exciting. <laughs> it, and they do they do a good job. Yes, they do. I like to watch the people's expressions, you know, yes. especially the older girls. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah. How about an outstanding event in your life? Something mm. that you can think of? Oh. Or you can have more than one. Oh, oh wow. Other than my five children. <laughs> that's very good. Yes. Um. You know, when my, I, like I said, I have four brothers. And my, the brother that's after me, David, when he was in probably the first grade, he and some other kids in the neighborhood were playing like cowboys and Indians. And they had these long sticks that they sharpened at the end. And one of them threw a stick at him and it stuck in like by his heel, by his Achilles tendon and it broke off in there. And he ended up with lockjaw. 
and he went to Riley down in Indianapolis and he was in a coma for months and months and first grade mm -hmm. and I, I can remember my folks drove down there all the time I mean we stayed with my aunts and uncles or my grandparents but he eventually came out of the coma and when he came back home he still complained about his foot hurting him and my grandmother told my mom why don't you put some bread soaked in milk on that and if there's wood in there it'll pull it out well, bread soaked with milk okay yeah and so they did and there were chunks that came out of there like that and he said that when he came right before he came out of his coma he was so thirsty he was crying he wanted to drink a water and there was this real pretty lady with him and she was talking to somebody and said can I show him where the water is and the person must have said yes so she showed him this rock and he turned it over and that's when he came out of his coma and he swears it was the Blessed Mother. <laughs> that's a nice story. That's really nice. Uh, but, you know, I think that since we're Catholic and, you know, we were going to church, right. you know, all the time to pray for him, uh, to me, that, that was it really special. is that. And does he have any after effects today? Is it okay? It's no, fine. in fact, he works at a hospital in, uh, in Denver. Oh. So it's like... You would expect, you know, him having spent all that time in a hospital, he wouldn't want to be anywhere near one. But, no, he works in the operating room out there. Oh, that's there. very good. Yeah. Okay. So. Any closing comments and uh, some things that you'd like to share with uh, us that you can think of? No, this, it's just been a wonderful experience. It's interesting because before I came to Purdue, um, when I worked at National Homes and all the other places, um, my friends would always say, well, why don't you go work at Purdue? I'm not going to work over at Purdue. There's just, it's, there's all those students, and you can't get around, and they don't pay well. <laughs> you know, all the things that I've heard and heard and heard. But, you know, when I came over here, it was like, why did I wait so long? It's just a wonderful place to work. They have wonderful benefits. The people are nice. You have an opportunity to go to school while you're here. I mean, it, it's just been amazing. Right. Yes. It really is. I wish I hadn't listened to everybody. <laughs> it's okay. You got a lot. Of, you got a lot of years ahead. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, thank you, Roseanne. This concludes. Oh, it. Thank you very it's much. Been fun. Really nice.